Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lunchtime Detroit Lions Talk, brought to you by Detroit Lions on the Prowl. Today we get a win, but there's a little bit of question uh, questions in my mind going on today. Uh, we'll get into who's eating, who's starving. We'll get into the game. We'll get into a little rant. It's going to be called spoiled food for the uh, <laughs> for our for our show today. But before we get into all that. I'm going to bring in my partner, my man of, man of steel over here, Kurt Steele. What up, though? Hey, it's Victory Monday once again here at Detroit Lions on the Prowl. So do us a favor. Watch this video all the way to the end so it improves our YouTube algorithm so more Lions fans like yourself can get more content from us right here on the show. And hit the subscribe button, ring that notification bell so you know you're getting fresh content from us right here on our show. It's time to start this show right, right now. Hey, welcome back to the show. It is time to get into the comment cards, your replies, for the video that we shot on Friday and your replies to the question of the day. So Jim, take it away. Okay, uh, thank you first for all your comments and, and supporting uh, Lunchtime with Detroit Lions Talk by Lions on the Prowl. Um, good vibration. I always <laughs> want to put you in here, but your comments are so long. <laughs> but this week we got a little bit of a shorter one. Why can we? Why can't we be in the East? <laughs> you nailed it. The mm -hmm. NFL is just like the WWF. They have it mm -hmm. set up the way they want it, so they can control what they want, and the refs control what the NFL wants to happen in games. We have a mm -hmm. little bit of a, a something coming up about the refs today, so mm -hmm. you'll you'll enjoy that. I hope. Mm -hmm. Do you really think no ref saw the PI that happened in the Saints in order to get th them to the Super Bowl versus the Rams, or mm -hmm. the PI on Pettigrew? wake up they pick uh, they pick who they want and they use the teams for their markets hmm that is an interesting take interesting take my man I, hey i can't say nothing bad about that one that was you know i can't say nothing about that one like the wwf so the wwf has predetermined outcomes but the games act that the, the matches are actually put on by the wrestlers and there is yeah. pain and stuff in it and there's stuff that happens but the ultimate outcome is decided by the management mm -hmm. now what he's saying is the ultimate um outcome is decide is decided by the management by yeah, the I, nfl I, 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 and there are cases where i have seen i've seen some things some that make me question yeah, I've seen some, but I wouldn't I wouldn't go that far. But I, I hear what you're saying. I think if it's anything, it's more about the betting. Too. Yeah. It it's more about uh the books and the bookies and then all that stuff. And it, I don't Man, know. There's a lot that, of stuff out there though. Referees in my Nick mind. Chuck, Nick Chuck pissed off some bookies yesterday. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what about the Hail Mary for uh What's his name for the, for the yeah Hop, yeah D Hop, and that now that was Megatron esque right there because yes, we've seen was. Calvin make that catch plenty of time. We're gonna yes, talk about was. him later on in the show. All so right, for the, general, the Texans, let's just yeah. trade him to Arizona for nobody. It's a good idea. Yeah, the general <laughs> view. <laughs> let's get it to him. He's a maniac, maniac. Shout out to maniac Tim. The this is the most I've heard him talk at one time. He sounds just as tired as everyone else of this regime, laugh out loud, one pride or don't ride, strong lions. That's right. Hey, good shout out, man. Maniac, you know, the flash dance on that one. So yeah, that was a good comment. I appreciate that one. <laughs> I'm sure Maniac Tim approves that message. So like we were in the election just a little bit ago, <laughs> he approves that message. Oh, David Harden. I believe the Lions could get 53 of the best players from every team and still not win. We could have the best coaches and still lose. When you're a losing team, you always get the penalties against us, which we will talk about. When we draft players and they come to the Lions and know we'll be losers, the answer is sell the team and change the name. 
you know, I like my Lions. I like my gear. Nah, and I, I like the I, colors. And... Uh, I like that. Yeah, this is classic. You know, I like the Lions. Yeah, I, I actually, like the Lions that have have one of the highest rated uniforms in the NFL. Yeah, they do. So I don't know about that one. All right, last one. Sports gamer at five thirty two. I have to disagree as well. There are bright spots. Our O line has been better, not great. But I think they need better personnel. Coach Prince has been here since Megatron and our wide receiver consistently do well. Would love more separation. Our quarterback coach has done well, in my opinion. And obviously, Coombs, uh, I'm okay with a rebuild, but rebuilds aren't about purging the things that you are working on. That are working. Hmm. Yeah. Gotta work on, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, so it's good. Yeah. Yeah, I like that comment. I like that comment. Um I, I think um, I think some some of the wide receiver separation has to do with the players that we have. I mean, we don't have a lot of speed demons, and we saw the separation that Marvin Hall got yesterday on that first touchdown from from uh, from Matthew Stafford. So we have to draft some more speed guys to get separation. And right now we don't have a lot of you know uh, top off guys besides Marvin Hall and maybe uh, Jamal Agnew. We're gonna go into a new segment, and this may not be all the time. But there's positives and there's negatives to this NFL game, this mm -hmm. game we call football. And it's called spoiled food <laughs> because this is the rotten side of, of the game this mm -hmm. week. Um, I was taken back by the officiating in this game. It, it bothered me to the point uh, I was screaming at the TV. When you have a penalty for pass interference that Aqib Tlaib, former cornerback, and the guy that they go to for all this stuff that uh, I can't remember his name now. I had it in the beginning, but I, I'm terrible. Oh, you're you talking about uh, Mike Pereira. Mike Pierre, Pereira, yes. Mm -hmm. And they Pereira. all agreed that was a terrible call. You can't bail a team out on fourth. Say, I can't do this good. Fourth and four. Mm -hmm. You can't bail a team out. When the other team is about to win the game and you mm -hmm. bailed them out with a terrible call, mm -hmm. these ticky tack holding calls that, that screwed up drives for the Lions in the second in the second half. There's a lot of there's a lot of play calling issues. There's a lot of issues on defense. We can't tackle very well. Mm -hmm. But we these other teams don't yeah. need the help. What are you yeah, doing? We don't need the help from we don't need the the, the assistant from the rest for the other team. Yeah, I agree with that 100. percent so then they give up on the Redskins and they decide, well, you know what? We're just going to give you this 15-yard penalty to set you up for the game-winning field goal because we screwed you out of the win in the first place. Well, it, it was it, – now, that one was rough. The, he took three steps. If he took two steps, he probably would have been okay. But he took three steps and shoved Stafford. So I think that one was – it was borderline, but I think that it was in a, within the letter of law for. I think uh, for, it was too, but I mean, there was some calls in this game, and especially yeah. the pass interferences on True yeah. Front that I was like, <laughs> yeah, I've seen was, a lot was, worse. If they picked up that. the flag, then yeah. they pick up a flag for, for a face, uh, the face for mask a face on mask. On. One, you know, it, it was just say, as much. It was just as much as a fake face mask as Aaron Rodgers was. Yeah. Yeah. And that Hail Mary thing. It was mm -hmm. the same thing, but yet, oh, mm -hmm. pick up the flag. You know what? Come on, yeah. guys. Yeah, the refs got to do it. Got They have to be more consistent with their cause. Um, we don't need any help losing the game or, you know, or even winning the game. We need to, to be fair and consistent refereeing. Uh, yep. I don't want us to have an advantage because of the refs, and no. I certainly don't want us to have a disadvantage. Let the players decide it on the mm -hmm. field. Keep your flag in your pocket. Unless it's an actual call, mm -hmm. fine. But you mm -hmm. can't call everything. Totally yeah. understand that. You can't put a flag on every play. But you can't just pick what team you want to throw a flag against. Holding mm -hmm. happens on every play. Oh, every yeah, play. Definitely. And when yeah. you only take one team and call holding on that team, it's yeah. absolutely ridiculous and it needs to stop. Yeah. I, NFL, I hope you hear this because I'm I'm totally I'm really upset about it. I'm being honest. It's yeah. ridiculous to watch pro football and watch teams get screwed over and over again. I don't just mean the Lions. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at the Saints. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of this that goes on in the NFL and it needs to stop. Now that's yeah. my first rant. Anything you mm -hmm. want to add to that before we move now, on, Kurt? It, it, it's um, it's a fair rant. I just need to be fair and equal. Now, now we know that referees are human and everything like that, and you know it's us all. Some some um, calls are judgment calls, um, but 
you have to be in fair and consistent when you're caught in a game. Uh, and you, you have to be consistent from game to game to game and from crew to crew to crew. You can have one crew call it tight, one crew calls it loose. You have to be consistent. All crews need to call it the same. I agree with that. There should be a protocol or some type of a thing. And, and if you can't get it right, you have to go to some sort of a system where, it, you know, what? I'm sorry, maybe it's maybe it's upstairs, maybe it's robotics, maybe it's whatever it is. But this mm-hmm. is not con- fair, not consistent. Mm-hmm. Teams are complete. Seattle, when they played Pittsburgh in that uh, in the Super Bowl game, the referee right. actually came out and apologized the next year mm-hmm. at their training camp. How, what does that help somebody who just lost the Super Bowl because of you morons? Really? It doesn't, doesn't help at all. <laughs> okay. Help Calvin all. Johnson, this is the second part of our spoiled food today. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have a different take than me. But I Calvin do. Johnson uh, was talking about playing with Green Bay while he was playing with the Lions. Mm-hmm. Why don't I like this? Because it's admitting you're not going to win. It's the defeatist mm-hmm. mentality that I don't like about this situation. It is not that he wants to go play with another team and he plays for our team. That's part of it. But mm-hmm. the part that I'm really upset about is you don't believe you can win with your own team, so you want to go to another team. Why don't mm-hmm. you be part of the part, part of the solution rather than being part of the problem? Yeah. You know, I don't like it. I don't like it from former players. You know what? There is a problem in Detroit. Number one, the ownership needs to fix it. It's not it's not on the player per se, but it's mm-hmm. ridiculous when you don't take ownership of yourself and say, I'm going to help this team win instead of saying, I'm going to another team. Thanks well, a lot. I have a different take than you do. Now, get this. Calvin Johnson pretty much had a Hall of Fame career with um, a ton of different quarterbacks. They never were set up for success. Either they had a good passing game and no running game, uh, no defense. Uh, the, the, the best uh, defense that we had was Jim Caldwell's first year. And that's the year they picked the flag up in Dallas. Um, I understand what he's saying. Why? I mean, he green Bay was a team that was built for success. They always had everything kind of all encompassing. So I understand what he's saying. Um, he still played his heart out in Detroit. Calvin Johnson played hurt. He played injured. He it was weeks that he would never pretty much even brisk practice. He would just go out and play the game. But he, he made the Lions. All, but he dropped a lot of passes. He made the career. Lions millions I'm just, I'm just of saying, dollars. I, I get that, but he millions dropped a of lot dollars. of passes. And maybe if your mind was on football instead of where you could be <laughs> or what you should be doing or nah, what you think I, this team should be doing, maybe you wouldn't have dropped so many passes. He, 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 but and I'm going to get the, heat for that. I know but I But look at the plays he did make. I know. Look at the plays he was incredible. I'm not even and, saying that. Front one of the he's the best wide receiver hands down in Lions history. Okay, and we believe Matthew Stafford was one of the best quarterbacks in the yes. league. So how come we can't win with that combination? You know what? It's the other stuff around it. They had they, they never had the complimentary pieces around them. Mm-hmm. When they had Matthew Stafford mm-hmm. and Calvin Johnson, they didn't have a running game. Yep. Except for one sense. year when they had the Reggie Bush. That was the only year we really had a consistent running game with both of those guys. For five yeah. games. For yeah. five games, too. He got, you know, he had a concussion issues in college. So that was a questionable pick for me anyway. Um, or we didn't have a solid defense. So it was well, it was yeah, always something that was, you know, in 14 except for and that, 15, we had a really good yeah, defense with the, all and, those players. The, with uh and that was that the first year with Caldwell, uh that was at 15. Um mm-hmm. I mean, it's just one of those things where I understand what fans get frustrated, but I understand his where he would want to go to somewhere where the team and the organization itself put together a winning combination and they had all three phases of the team play well. You know, mm-hmm. you got to remember it during that period, uh, Aaron Rodgers won a Super Bowl up there yeah. in Green Bay. Yeah. So I get what he's saying. I understand that because from an organizational standpoint, look how many seats Calvin Johnson played on a losing team, probably 90% of his career in Detroit. He did. He losing did. team. So I could understand why his he would say that. Now, do I agree with him? Does it hurt that he that he would want to go play, in, especially in Green Bay? Yes, that freaking sucks because I hate Green Bay. Me but too. I understand because one thing I do have, I have respect for talent, and Aaron Rodgers is one of the most talented quarterbacks ever to play the game. 
Yeah, unfortunately. I got to get <laughs> off this topic because I hate Aaron <laughs> Rodgers. All right. So the uh, we're going to go into uh, the main course and who's eating, who's starving. Hey, it's kind of going to go let's hand in hand today. News, baby. I want to I want I want to call part of this the res the resurrection of the mats, and <laughs> because Matt Prater three for three on the day Legatron was a, back. <laughs> Legatron is back, baby. He was back in a big way. Fifty nine yard game winning field goal that should have never had to happen because we heard nah. of that we heard that yeah. before, but this game we were killing them. And then mm -hmm. we get conservative, and then the refs decided they were going to start taking drives away from us. Yeah. If you get into a first and 20 or a second and 20 situation from a holding perspective, you can't run the ball, you're one-dimensional, they mm -hmm. have a pretty good pass rush, and that hurt us. Those you penalties know, really hurt us. You know, they only sack – for having a top-rated uh, defensive line in the league, we got one sack. You know, they, all those first-round picks, they got one sack on Matthew one Stafford. One sack. And that was That's a really good, good job by the offensive line. And, and shout out to Odea Bushi even because yeah, stepping in, uh, stepping up next, next man up, played a decent mm -hmm. game. Didn't give up. I mean, maybe he gave up the one sack. I don't really know who gave up. I think he did. I, I think he was coming from that side of the ball. It wasn't, it wasn't on Decker's side. Still hasn't given up a sack all season uh, for Taylor Decker. He, he, had, he held to, to prevent, he had a hold up. Yeah, he prevent, did. He held once giving up a sack. sack. So, yeah. um, uh, one thing I, I would definitely say is that um, Matthew Stafford did a really good job. And if you look at statistically, um, they had the best pass defense in the league. They were the number one pass uh, defense yeah. as far as yards and everything. Yeah. So yeah, he Stafford did, did a great job. Did a really good job of picking apart that defense. Um, he has a and, uh, it, but it started up front because if you know really bit about defense in the secondary – they really play well when the upfront guys play well. So That's when they true. get pressure on a quarterback and, you know, they can defend well in the, on the back end and Detroit did not let them get the Matthew Stafford. He had a clean pocket most of the game. So he did, uh, and, but credit to good, Stafford. Cause he was playing yeah. really mobile. He was stepping up in the pocket. He was moving he around was. a little bit, 127.8 quarterback rating he, for Matthew Stafford, he three touchdowns, zero interceptions, Ooh. 276 really yards, mm -hmm. Matt, Matt, I'm not going to say Patricia because I don't know about that. Because nope. I think I think he did enough to lose this game. Yeah. Um, that conservative <laughs> crap that he goes to. Yeah. They, they get a lead and they, mm. they just really just, they downshift. I'm there. like, come yeah. on, man. You have to do what, what you have to put your foot on the gas and run. You look at, you look at Tampa Bay. They ran the score up on, yeah, on, they did. Uh, on Carolina. Mm -hmm. 46 points. That the Lions could have had could have had forty eight points. I mean, they easily. They, I mean, but what they kept I, I, foot on I don't the know gas. what happens, but it's hand in hand. So the yeah. offense doesn't go anywhere, and then the defense starts making missing tackles. Their running games. Every team seems mm -hmm. to be able to get the running game going when our mm -hmm. offense starts to sputter. So what yeah. does that tell you? It tells you number one that the offense needs to stay aggressive. They need mm -hmm. to stay running the ball well and mixing in that nice deep pass, mid-range mm -hmm. pass. We weren't doing that. We were just kind of handing the ball off. Oh, who cares? We're up 24 to 10 or whatever yeah. it was at the time. It, it was a play calling that got really, it really conservative. Yeah. Now, uh, one thing, I, 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 I am so glad that they finally started DeAndre Swift. Oh, my goodness. Oh, We've been begging by, for that. What a game by we DeAndre have been begging, Swift. And he showed why he should be starting. Showed up, showed out. Ooh, out. Ooh. That that's touchdown catch was woo. he ran he was, somebody he over. Was, he was bringing the wood. He he ran a couple people over. Yeah, he was bringing game. the wood. He was bringing the wood. He's patient, but he knows when to hit the hole and hit that other gear. He's yeah. got a lot of good things about him, mm -hmm. and I'd like to see him play some more. I really yeah. would. Uh, I do believe that he should be the starting running back right now. Uh, although Adrian Peterson got 5.3 yards a carry, four carries, yeah, he, 21 yards. He did his big, thing. He had, a, he had a big run. He had a, a big, nice, big, solid run. He even caught nice a couple strength. passes. Yeah, nice yeah, strike. So, yeah, that so. catch by DeAndre Swift it was low, and, yeah. and he picked it out of the air and then went straight to the end zone. I mean. He, he, that route he ran was ridiculous, man. It was that, nice. That that linebacker was he was, wasn't even close to him when he made this when he made that cut and turned around. I was like, "Where's I mean, the he linebacker?" He, he was five he was five yards the other way. <laughs> five so, targets, five mm -hmm. catches, 
Yep. That's a big number for me. 68 yeah. yards receiving. He averaged 13.6. He had a touchdown. 26 mm -hmm. yards was his longest. And so, but for mm -hmm. his uh, running, he had 81 yards rushing and yeah. 17 yards was his longest. His average was 5.1. Okay, we're going to go into, uh, is there anything else you want to cover over this uh, game? Uh, uh, really? I want to uh, go into who's eating, who's starving is where I'm going with it. Yeah, let me, let me, uh, I, I really would, um, the, the secondary, uh, I think that really once once we get ahead and teams start running that running that two minute drill, I think we need to work on that our two minute our two minute defense. Um, I think because what we, we got do too, is too we go into a shell. We go into and a shell. We go into a zone. We go into a prevent defense. <laughs> yeah, and you can't do you. You have to stay aggressive because yeah. you can a pro quarterback like Alex Smith. He, I mean, he's he he was hurt, and that's why he really wasn't starting because there's no there's no other quarterback on the. Washington football team, that's a better quarterback than Alex Smith. No. So uh, he's a pro, um, a pro's pro. He can pick you apart. So he, almost he got, ate that yeah. zone up. He almost got 400 yards. He yeah, got he almost got 499 yards. yards. I mean, yeah. his quarterback rating was only an 89.2. Yeah. He had that, two sacks. That young receiver to have McLaurin, that yeah. guy, he's good. He's good. Yeah. But that overall, I, I would say this. Uh, I like the – when it was time to show up, our offense showed up. And I like that. You know, we actually held their running game to 89 yards, which yeah. is really important. You know, yeah, and they have Even a couple of good young backs running, over there too. Yeah, they started running on us a little bit, mm -hmm. but man, that passing. When we get into a lead, we go mm -hmm. into this prevent crap defense that we play. I don't know what it cover is. Cover two, but cover just, three. Yeah, it just yeah. for me, it's it's not. It's not the same thing as when, you know, they're rushing the quarterback a little bit more give, or whatever. Give us some zone know. blitzes. Give, on, give us yeah. some stuff off the edge. That 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 definitely would help with that uh, that defense. All right. We're going to go into who's eating, who's starving. We've got a mm -hmm. lot of players eating on this week, and that's great because mm -hmm. it's a victory Monday. We love to have our shows on a victory Monday. But, Kurt, who you got? And as many as you want, who's eating? Who's, who's eating? Matthew Stafford's eating. Marvin Jones is eating, you know, DeAndre Swift is eating on the defense. Romeo O'Quarra is eating. Uh, even Everson Griffin, five quarterback hits in a sack. Mm, yes. He was eating. Uh, Jamie Collins was eating. They would just eat. It was yum, yum, yum city over there uh, in Detroit on Sunday. I'm going to go into who's starving this week, and it's carry on Johnson for me. One, <laughs> one carry for three yards. And that's a utilization mm. thing, too. It's just yeah. not his fault. Uh, Danny Amendola, he got three targets uh, and only 10 yards. There was some of those plays where I thought he could have done a little bit better, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. It's just that's the way it is. One target for Isaac Nada, and he had zero catches. Three targets for Jesse James. He had two catches. Uh, so that was there. And on defense... I got to call out a few people. It's my time to call out Feet of Stone, Jelani Tavai. He's always starving, man. One tackle in this game. <laughs> You're a starting linebacker, and you get one tackle. Guess yeah. what? We have two starting linebackers that got one tackle. The other one is Christian. Please get me off this team, Jones. And he's he has one tackle. One tackle. In the whole game. Are you kidding me right now? Mm -hmm. I hate to say this, but there's one other guy that I like on this team. Mm -hmm. but And he had one quarterback hit, but it looked like a mountain was moving at him. That's Danny mm -hmm. Shelton. He had one tackle in this game. Yeah, he, he didn't have a – he had a good quarterback pressure. Uh, right. Got, he got was, in Alex Smith's face, but – Yeah, it was, was like King Kong was coming at him. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. what it looked like in slow motion or something. But that, that's that's my starving people for today. I, I There's a few more. Okuda, oh, I didn't like the way he tackled today. Yeah, right he Right around he, the ankles, but, yeah, man, people he, were breaking tackles, leaving him on the ground quite a bit. Yeah, he wasn't solid like he – because he's usually a good tackler. He's usually a really good tackler. Yeah. So that's, that's my who's what, starving today. I got one more starving, man. You do? And I was disappointed. TJ – was starving yesterday. I was expecting him to have a bigger game than that. But he only got targeted four times. Yeah. He, but did, he only caught like, two of those. He got yeah, he was starving. He was starving. He was starving. Yeah. He was starving yep. for me. You're yeah. right. You're right. Yeah. So yeah, this is a good game. Um you know, uh it was there, 
There is one yeah. thing. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm More stressful crazy. than it needed to be. More stressful than it needed to be. It, that, that game could have been a runaway. Um, yeah. And I bragged to a friend of mine uh, that I serve with. He's a big Washington fan. And he, he said, <laughs> he said, big whoop. Because I, I put a picture of Matthew Stafford. I said uh, something about Stafford and, and against their team. And he said, um, big whoop. Uh, all you did was hurt your draft position. So <laughs> he was like. He's uh, right, too. But here's, yeah. okay, now I'm going to take the positives. Uh, the positives uh-huh. in this game were mm-hmm. the Lions played well against another crappy team. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. They beat who they're supposed to beat. Yep. But they made it way too close. Yeah, it made the it way too close. bad part. What's that? Matt Patricia still keeps his job uh, another yeah. week. Because his, did, he, I, there were reports that again game. that he was, his job was he was he was, he was gone. He was gone. If, he, if they lost that game yesterday, especially at home again, yeah, Patricia would have been out. He'd have been out today. Man, he's got like, um, he's got I, like, I don't know. He's got 29 lives. He, 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 Some, he, I don't he ain't know. got nine lives. He got 29, 29 lives. 29 lives. <laughs> okay, but, um, so we're going to wrap up the show here pretty quick. I want to get to the question of the day first. Okay. Do you think the Detroit Lions will make the playoffs? How Ooh. much Kool-Aid are you drinking? Are you full of hopium or are you like me and like, nah, this isn't going to happen? What do you think? Do you think the Lions make the playoffs or not? Now for our segment that I like the most of our show. It is dessert with Kurt. Hey, it's time for some sweet morsels today. And it comes from one Matthew Stafford. He is five, count them, five and O oh, versus the Washington Can't football team. He has not lost to Washington in his career. That is a great stat for against one team that's not even in your division. So shout out to my man, Matthew Stafford. He can wear the big fur coat with the iced out like he did a couple of yeah, weeks ago he against yes, Atlanta. He because guess what? 16 seconds, people thought the Lions were going to kneel the ball down, but they drove him, he drove him down the field, got him in the field goal position, and Legatron mm. made a return. Yes, so, he did. Shout Gosh. out to Matthew Stafford and for Matthew Prater for helping him get and Matt Patricia for keeping his job once again. Yeah, once. I have again. a trivia question. The Uh-oh. Lions trivia question for today: How many current NFL teams have never appeared in a Super Bowl? Our Lions are one of them, obviously, but there are three other teams. Can you name them? No googling, no no Bing, no search engines. Just off the top of your head. Ooh. Can you name the four teams that are, and it's only three because you know one of them's us. You know, you got the it The other three teams. <laughs> There's three more teams in the NFL that have never reached the Super Bowl. I'm not talking about winning it because there's 12 NFL franchises that have not won it, but four that have not made it to the Super Bowl. So that's your trivia question for today. Put it in the comments below because uh, that will help us out and you too. That yeah. is going to wrap it up today for this show. Really appreciate each and every one of you rocking with us. And I'm going to ask Kurt to take it home today. Hey, enjoy yourself on Victory Monday right here from Detroit Lions on the Prowl. We appreciate your viewership. And if we, if you watch this video to this point, you watched it all the way to the end and you helped us improve our YouTube algorithm to bring our content for more Lions fans just like yourself. And as always, hit the subscribe button, ring that notification bell so you know when you're getting fresh content from us right here on our show. And whatever you do in life, you got to boss up, ball out, and be the best version of you that you can be. For my man Jim over here at Detroit Lions on the Prowl. This is Kurt Steele, and we will holler at you real soon.